Hello and welcome to this BME 306 395 tutorial on how to use multiple physics in COBSOL to model the mixing of two dilute species under laminar flow. To get started, open a new file in COBSOL, navigate to Model Wizard, select 2D, and then import the necessary physics, uh, which can be found under Fluid Flow, Single Phase Flow, Laminar Flow, as well as Chemical Species Transport, Transport of Diluted Species. I'll double click to import those and then move on to study where I'll select a time dependent study and wait for COMSOL to open up the user interface. Today specifically we'll be modeling a wide channel micro mixer which as the name suggests can be drawn as having two inlets which combine to a single shared uh, straight channel uh, over which the fluids interact before terminating in a single outlet. Now, instead of modeling this freehand, what we'll do instead is define our geometry parametrically, starting with a shared straight channel before moving back to the inlets. To cut down on the time it takes to model this, I'll also be taking advantage of a Y-channel micromixer's uh, symmetry about the x-axis to only model one half of it before using a mirror transformation. So to get started, I'll first select an appropriate length unit of millimeters and then using the rectangle tool draw um, our straight channel. And now instead of leaving uh, under the size and shape tab our width and height specified with hard-coded values, I'll define two parameters L0 and H0 which I can specify under the parameters tab in global definitions. I'll select a length of 40 millimeters and a height of 5 millimeters. Going back to our geometry tab, I can then build all and zooming out, see that our rectangle now fits those specified um, dimensions. Zooming out once more, can go ahead and start to draw out what our inlet will look like, where we'll have some characteristic length as well as angle relative to the x-axis. To define that parametrically, we can think about specifying the angle as some value, some variable theta. Here I'll select 30 degrees. And some length uh, we'll call entry length of say five millimeters. Now with some basic trigonometry, we can define what the rise and the run of this entry uh, inlet will be. Uh, we'll call those variables L1 to define the, uh, the run or, or the, the width of it as cosine of theta times entry length. and the height or the rise h1 as sine of theta times entry length. Navigating back to our geometry tab, we can then open the polygon which defines those um, bounds for our uh, inlet channel and specify uh, in the, the coordinates table um, an exposition of minus L1 minus L1, and a height of H0, H0 plus H1, H1, and H0, before building all objects and seeing that that leads to some commensurate change in the dimensions of our um, inlet. If I decide, however, that I would like, say, a longer uh, entry length, I can simply define that back under the parameters tab before building all on the geometry again. Lastly, to reflect that across the x-axis, I'll right-click on geometry, navigate to transforms, and select mirror for defining our line of reflection selecting Keep Input Objects, and clicking on the domains we'd like to mirror. 
Now that that's done, we can move on to importing our materials. We'll assume a pre-wetted channel um, and use water to define that. If we'd like to define um, the boundary conditions for that as well, or the boundary material, we can simply import a second material, select boundary under geometric entity level, and then either manually select bounds or uh, click on all boundaries and deselect our inlets, our outlets, and any other internal features which we would like to keep um, not as a boundary. You should note that for the rest of this tutorial we'll be using a no-slip condition. Um, so this ref so this decision um, is really only for is really only included here for completeness sake. Now we can move on to our laminar flow physics where I'll right click and instantiate two inlets and a single outlet which I can then defined by clicking on the relevant um, boundaries. We'll use a pressure condition on the outlet of zero pressure relative to atmospheric. And on the inlet conditions, we'll define some variable V naught for our first inlet and our second inlet, which we can again specify under the parameters tab. Here I'll select a velocity of one centimeter per second. Now we can navigate to our Transport and Dilute Species tab, making sure to select the Velocity field under Transport Properties as Velocity field SPF so that um, COMSOL will interface the Transport and Dilute Species in the laminar flow physics. And then also under the main window for uh, Transport and Dilute Species, we'll instantiate a second variable for concentration. Uh, since we'll be tracking two species and how they interact. We'll redefine that first one as C1 before moving on. Now I'll right click, define two concentration bounds, as well as an uh, outflow bound. We'll set the outflow right along our outlet, just like in laminar flow. And then for the concentration boundaries, I'll select the first one, pointing to species C1 with an initial concentration of C0, and the second concentration bound pointing to species C2 with an equal concentration of C0. Under the parameters tab, I'll set that as 10 micromole, which COMSOL will treat in units of 0 0.01 moles per meter cubed. One last thing to note is that under the Transport Properties tab, you have the option to define uh, the diffusion coefficient for both species C1 and species C2. Here, however, I'll be leaving that as the default. Now we can move on to our mesh tab. Um, we're using a physics controlled mesh. I'll select a slightly finer element size before building all and then moving on to the time-dependent study, where we'll select a relatively short simulation time of 10 seconds, outputting results every 0 0.05 seconds. Now we just have to click Compute. And we'll see that once Comtal has finished running the simulation, it provides us with a number of um, tools to start analyzing uh, our system, including velocity across the surface, pressure, and then concentration uh, for C1 and C2 as that evolves with time, which you can either plot by manually selecting times under the drop-down menu, or in the top right corner, click on animation, and then player to have console put together a short movie for how the particular species evolves uh, over time. Thinking about how we might quantitatively assess mixing along the, the length of the channel, though, um, we have a couple of tools at our disposal. First one would be to define a cut line 2D 
at some uh, length along the channel. Here I'll say at 10 millimeters. Um, between the different wide channel or the y directional bounds of our system. I'm, here I'm manually overshooting uh, between minus 10 and 10 millimeters. From that, we can then right click on results, import a 1D plot group, point the data set towards that cut line, and right click once more to define a line graph for C1. What this diagram shows is what the concentration of C1 looks like across the, the width of that channel. Um, we could then duplicate that and plot what C2 looks like using a different color uh, for ease of visualization. Now, if since we're interested in the overlap or the mixed region between those, we can define once more a third line graph, duplicating one of the previous ones, by taking the minimum value between C1 and C2. If we plot this then in black, we can see that this function described where there's overlap, just like we'd want. To see um, what that looks like in two dimensions or across the surface of our plot, we can duplicate one of the previous concentration plots, surface plots, um, open that tab, and then set our expression as the minimum of C1 and C2. Clicking plot, we can then see where the overlapping, uh, where the overlap is between our two species. Um, now, in a research or a diagnostic capacity, it's very likely that you'll only be able to discern some smaller fraction of this calculated overlap that's bounded by a limit of detection. To account for that, we can simply add a conditional with a specified limit, say one micromole, to our expression before clicking plot, where Comsol will generate a um, mask of true-false where that's true, where the, the minimum concentration of the overlap is above that limit of detection. And if we set a smaller limit of detection, you'll notice that that boundary widens, or with a slightly higher one, you can see that it also shrinks. Um, now, up until this point, our analysis has still only been qualitative or semi-quantitative at best. What would be really useful would be some method to evaluate the width of this mixed region across the length of our channel. Uh, in Comsol, one way to do this is via linear projection, which will allow us to integrate our expression for the mixed region along a 1D path by mapping our 2D channel space into a one-dimensional line. To do that, we can navigate uh, to our definitions tab under component one, right click, go to non-local couplings, and select linear projection. We'll select the domains over which we'd like to, to assess the mixed width and define some source vertex, X component, and Y component for a 2D space, and then an origin, and an X component uh, along which the, the line we'd like to integrate will, will um, stretch. Then going back to our results tab, you can right click on data sets and define a cut line across the length of our channel, going from zero to L naught along the, the X axis. Right clicking once more, we'll add a 1D plot group. with a data set along that second cut line. And define our expression as linear projection of C1 
the minimum of C1, C2 above our limit of detection. Um, to make sure that Comptel can evaluate this, we'll first have to, we'll also have to update our solution. But now you can see, especially if we select just one time point, um, how mixing along the length of our channel, uh, what that profile looks like, um, and all the more useful, we can actually divide by the linear projection of a strictly true condition to normalize that. Um, so now we're looking at the normalized width of the mixed region as a function of length. Um, now, since we went to all the trouble of parametrically defining our geometry, we can extend our analysis one step further by using this uh, normalized width of the mixed region as an output function and running a parametric sweep by right-clicking uh, on study one selecting parametric sweep, and then defining or, or sweeping over, say, theta from 15 to 70 degrees in 15 degree increments. I'll click Compute, and then Comsol will start churning through each one of those um, parameterizations with our geometry. To track the progress, you can click on the progress tab and see where uh, along where the, where the simulation is in time, or you can also click on the convergence plot to see how each one of those solutions converges to a well-defined, um, how each one of those simulations converges to a well-defined solution. I'll speed this part of the video up and see you in just a second. Great. And so as that finishes, we can go back to our cut line 2D, make sure that the data set now points to our parametric solutions, and then navigate back to our 1D plot group for uh, normalized width of our mixing region and see what that looks like for each condition at the last time point. I'll add in a legend uh, in the bottom right. And now we can see that as we uh, take on a more and more acute angle, the region of mixing actually decreases uh, with the highest degree of mixing with a theta of 60 degrees. Presumably that trend would increase as you went to uh, an increasingly oblique angle. Obviously there's more than one parameter to sweep though, and if you're interested, going back to the parametric sweep, you could also vary the length of the channel, the height of the channel, entry length, um, or the speed or initial, initial concentration of your parameters or of your species. Um, even multiples of these all at the same time uh, to start to build out a real intuition of your system and how different choices as an engineer will affect your output. Um, so with that, to recap, uh, we walked through how to model microchannel mixing using single phase laminar flow and transport a dilute species physics. We discussed how to parametrically define the geometry for our micromixer and how to run a parametric sweep, as well as analyze uh, mixing as a function of length. This tutorial is by no means comprehensive, but I hope that you found it useful when making up your own devices. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you.